Welcome back. We're going to continue working on our 2004 Pontiac Grand Am GT, uh, or as the experts of the internet like to call it, my epic waste of time. Uh, so far we've wasted just about two hours of time dropping the engine, cutting the front end apart, and stripping it all down. There's still some time left in the day, so let's waste some more. So what are the odds that that bolt's going to come out without breaking? I've done enough of these to know it's probably going to break. Now I could heat it up from the backside and take it out, but I'm just going to break it because GM gave us another hole so that we could just move it over here. That's what I usually do. Uh, lucky for me, I don't think anyone else is crazy enough to fix this car, so uh, it probably won't happen again. Wow. I broke these on cars that were less than six months old with less than a thousand miles on. So now that this car has made me look like I have no clue what I'm doing, I'll go back to something I can handle, like taking some more of it apart. We're going to remove the hood latch, and we'll screw the screws back in to add weight to our pile. We can take off our center support here. Try not to drop the nuts down in our bumper reinforcement, but if we do, it doesn't really matter. We're going to cut all that off anyway. And of course we didn't, because it didn't matter. Now we can start cutting off some of the damaged inner structure. We'll start with the upper tie bar, because it's right here, easy to get to. And we're using our reciprocating butter knife. Yeah, that's right, I can't afford those fancy saw blades with teeth. So with a little bit of patience and a lot of time, we'll just eventually wear through with our dull saw blade. But hey, at least I'm conserving materials, right? Now that we got through the upper tie bar, we'll cut our reinforcement. We're going to leave a little extra on here. We're not cutting off the whole piece because we're going to use that to pull eventually. We're just trying to get the mangled parts out of our way. We're cutting around corners. And new saw blade. And the other one wasn't really working for me. So we'll start cutting from the bottom up because apparently there's a little tension on here. And since we don't want to read another dull saw blade, we'll try a different approach. And we're through. So now we can start cutting our frame rail. We're going to cut it right behind the part that's all wrinkled up. If we were to cut the frame rail off at the very back where we're going to end up replacing it anyway, we don't really have anything to pull on. It makes it much harder. This way there's extra holes in the frame rail or places we can clamp to and not worry about tearing it. So that's why we leave a little extra. Now we'll Cut the upper rail. We made it through our frame rail on the bottom. There's also part of the apron in here as well. I think the few teeth that this saw blade had left are now pretty much worn down to nothing. I could probably cut through it faster with some dental floss, but well, we're going to keep going with our reciprocating butter knife. I think I need to find a saw blade sponsor. I could actually get this job done in half the time. Now we'll cut from the bottom side so we don't end up binding our saw blade in there and bending it. And we have to get a new one. If it's dull, we can keep using it. But when it looks like a pretzel, it does not work at all. A little bit of wiggle and pull. Maybe we'll get our saw blade back out of there. Now our saw is out, we can just twist the thing off and, you know. So we clamped it up to our mobile frame rack. The fork is just sitting on the mount, the subframe in the back. We can pull against that. Since we're pulling straight back, it shouldn't be a problem until it is. So we'll pull that up for tie bar first, because it's pretty easy. Get it back about where it belongs and we'll hammer out our pieces that are attached to it to stress relieve them and get all the kinks out of them. We can measure our upper rail, make sure that we got it back in the right spot. We're going to leave this part on there so we do have to pay attention to where it's at. The upper tie bar, we're going to cut all that off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
Now we can start pulling our bumper reinforcement back. That's why we left the end of it on there. Kind of gives it a little more leverage. We're only worried about the part that's actually attached to the end of our frame rail. So this makes pulling a little bit easier and I don't have to move the mobile frame rail. Now we're just gonna hammer the end of our rail in that was pulled out. Get the ears back where they belong. A little stress relieving on the top. Get this bracket back where it belongs. The rail itself wasn't bent. It was just the ears at the end. So we're just gonna hammer it all back into place. And now we can start on our left frame rail. Use that little hole that was in there. Hammer out this kink that's in the back. Even though we're changing the entire frame rail, we still want to get this out of here because the apron is still attached to it and it could have some bends in it. So if we straighten out the frame rail, the apron goes with. If we put a new frame rail up, we know our apron's in the right spot. Now we're gonna get our favorite tool out and we're gonna make a little window. We're just going to cut out the outside of this frame rail so we can see what's inside and we can get to the inside of the frame rail where that big kink is. Takes a little time, it's a double panel. We're cutting through both of them. Our air chisel's working hard today. So when we got our piece out, we'll just smash it open. We don't need to cut the other side. Put out a little more aggression. And both of our panels fold over. Now we can get our chisel in there. We can start hammering out this kink. It actually moves pretty easy. This is not high strength steel, so it goes where you want it to go. And once we have this piece straightened out, we can start cutting off all of our other panels. We'll start with the upper frame rail here. So it appears that our brake job hammer is much more useful than just for brake jobs. And unfortunately, due to the supply chain issues, it's still not available in my Amazon store. I think I may need to send this in for repair. The squeaker doesn't seem to be working. It also seems to take a lot to get these welds to break. Maybe I'm using the wrong hammer. I don't know. The experts have found us. We prepped all of our welds. We put all our welds through primer on our bare metal mating services, and we ordered a pizza. We didn't get a pizza, but we got the pizza girl to help us put this piece up there. So we're kind of kind of slide together. If we get the panels that overlap each other lined up, that upper frame rail actually kind of gets sandwiched in between, so that's going to be our biggest challenge. Oh no, I'm sorry. The biggest challenge is going to get the pizza girl to understand what I'm trying to tell her. She'll get it eventually. And the upper tie bar over the other piece because it fits down inside. Our lower frame rail and the driver's side slides right over. And the upper frame rail, we're going to sandwich these pieces in. So we have our scraper in there. We'll pry the apron over and kind of force it in there. And we'll tap our lower frame rail up into place. And it looks like it's about where it goes. We did scribe our pieces. So we're going to line up our lines and clamp it up. See how close that gets us. Measure everything, see if our scribe lines are right on or if we need to adjust it. Use the cross measurements, those are always the best, they're my favorite. Cross measurements are okay, we're going to go side to side. 
Then we get a couple more cross measurements for our towers. Make sure our tower is in the right spot. And we're going to make sure we're the right length front to back. The passenger side really shouldn't be a problem, but the driver's side might be. And we can measure where our subframe is going to mount to. Front to back. Make sure our mounts are in the right spot. I just took these measurements off of our used subframe. It was upside down to find out exactly what it should be. The front to back and side to side measurements I do have. And since I don't feel like using that Pythagorean theorem thing, I didn't feel like coming up with the cross measurements. I just measured it off the subframe. Now we can start welding everything up. And over here on the frame rail on the passenger side, we're going to scuff it all down and we're going to prime all these spots that we just welded up because we're never going to see them again. And even though we're going to put our cavity wax in here, it doesn't hurt to clean them all up and prime them ahead of time before we cavity wax. Just extra protection to keep it from rusting. Probably be the only part of this Grand Am that doesn't rust. This really should be the gnome's job, but eh, he's not here yet. He's still in his tree or wherever gnomes live. So I have to do it. Besides, it's the only kind of painting they let me do anymore. So we're just gonna hose it down Probably run it, no big deal, doesn't really matter. Like I said, no one's going to see it again. And if you don't tell, I won't. Now we can put our last piece on. That's it. Just two pieces of this whole job. The first piece was made up of about 20, but we put it all on as one. We'll line up our scribe marks, and then we'll clamp it up. We really don't have to worry about where the bolts for the absorber go. As long as those holes are lined up, we're good. So we'll measure it, make sure they are. And I moved the camera so you can see I really am measuring from the other side. And then just make it up. Because we all know you guys have trust issues. So now that it's in the right spot, you can just start tacking it all up. Clamp it. Hope it stays on there. We'll move our clamp over because I didn't feel like dragging all the clamps out. And we'll reuse them. A couple more welds. Pull our clamps off. And we're done. So I'm going to go over and strip the hood down. Painting gnome is going to paint the inside of it for us. This is the white hood that came off of my O3. It was sitting aside. I replaced it with the Ram Air hood. Well, it's going on this car. So that's enough for me. The bodywork and painting gnome should be along shortly. I'll grind all of our welds down, and then I'll edge out the whole inside so that I can put the engine and trans back in here. So until he does that, I'm going to take a break. Now, in case you're wondering, I have four hours in this car so far. So I haven't wasted that much time. But it's still an epic waste of time, according to the internet. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.